Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. So, like many of you, I'm in agreement that these excessive lockdown rules are not conducive towards the overall health of society. I am 110% supportive of a very surgical back-to-work protocol. The problem with taking such excessive measures is that people tend to counteract as excessively. I'm going to borrow an analogy from another YouTuber who talked about how if there's a busy highway and there's a lot of fatalities on this highway, you don't want to reduce the speed limit down to 10 in an attempt to eradicate all accidents because you're going to piss a lot of people off and they are going to respond by either breaking the law or protesting. Now, obviously, we're talking about an infectious disease here which grows exponentially so it's not exactly a one-to-one -one relationship in this analogy but the principle is still the same if you try to take a blanket approach to addressing the problem using excessive rule of law people will react to that like they're doing now and they will protest those laws and the problem is that to overcompensate for the excessive crackdown which was imposed on people people will go on the complete opposite end of the spectrum and buy into theories which suggest that there's no problem at all. That speeding isn't a problem at all and we shouldn't have speed limits everywhere. Just make everywhere an autobahn. Now you could say that the governments of the world could have had a better plan of action to deal with this scenario, a more measured and calculated response instead of locking down the entire country and throwing the economy into oblivion. But we'll give them the benefit of the doubt and we'll say that they got caught with their pants down. Regardless, when they seen the dominoes start to fall in China, in Iran, in France, in Italy, in Spain, the planning for imposing an economically sustainable lockdown should have started. But it didn't and they locked down the whole country and now people are protesting it. But here is the problem and here is where I'm going to put my tinfoil hat on for a second. I'm going to tell you what I think is happening right now potentially. Because as we're going to talk about, there are some extremists out there who are now starting to say things like this is not worse than the flu. I am going to completely destroy that idea in this video. But above and beyond that, here is what those protesters should be concerned about. When the lockdowns relax and the infection spreads and the second wave comes, they will likely be scapegoated for the problem. The finger will be pointed at them. Now, I don't think that that's a good thing. I don't necessarily agree with that because, like I said, we're all culpable to some extent. But that's what's potentially brewing right now. This is shaping up to be one of the most politically divisive issues of 2020. This thing is very, very infectious. We are talking about r knots upwards of possibly four. That means that for every person who gets it, they potentially infect four people. We are still seeing sustained spread even with an aggressive global lockdown never before seen in history. The flu is not nearly as infectious and not nearly as fatal. But because the government responded with such aggressive lockdown measures, it pissed a bunch of people off and now they think that everything that the government says is complete and utter BS. So now they don't believe the numbers at all. And now they think that this is no big deal, which is very dangerous. Do we need to remind people that China was welding people into buildings just a couple months ago? That they were hauling people off in the backs of trucks, kicking and screaming against their will, ripping them from their family members, whether they were kids, parents, sisters, brothers, it didn't matter. If you were tested positive for this, you were hauled off to the quarantine zone. You don't do that for something that's not a big deal. To put it in perspective, the CDC reports that on average, every year, the flu kills between 250 and 500,000 people. Now, I know some people struggle with math. This virus has already killed approximately 200,000 people and we've been in global lockdown the whole time we flattened the curve the whole time we are only four months into the year and arguably most of the world missed peak flu season so think about that for a second in a couple weeks we'll already be at the lower range estimates for flu deaths every year with this virus with a global lockdown having missed peak season and only four months into the year. Now, if you struggle to do math, let's put this in perspective. 
The flu kills between 250 and 500,000 people a year. That is with no lockdown and no social distancing. That is all year with the peak season being in January and February. Remember, we missed January and February with this virus. And we haven't even really seen the first true seasonal round of mutations with the virus yet. So God only knows what the second wave will bring. And remember that the second wave, historically speaking, is typically far more lethal than the first, which was the case with the Spanish flu in which the majority of deaths occurred in the second wave. So how many people do you think would have died if we had done nothing, if this happened in peak season, and if it happened all year with seasonal mutations and additive to the fact that you can get the flu at the same time as you can get this virus? It shouldn't take a mathematician to understand how potentially lethal this could be. Never forget the reaction of the Chinese government to this problem. They seen what happened firsthand. Some people might say that they just did that for show to show the world that they were trying to take action to cover their butts. But let's be honest, if they wanted to do that, they didn't have to go to that extent. They could have did a nationwide lockdown. They didn't have to be as draconian about it and they didn't have to let it drag on as long. And they could have openly accepted defeat and let the thing spread within their society because they, let's face it, they have a lot of incentive to do so if you were thinking strictly like an authoritarian dictator. If we were projecting the most sinister depopulation agenda onto them, they would have some incentive to let this thing spread. The fact that instead they put an unprecedented crackdown on their population to the near total demise of their own economy says something really significant. It says that they thought this was serious as all hell. Do you really think that the Chinese government is so benevolent with its millions of what it probably views as expendable people? would destroy its economy for something with a 0.1% fatality rate. And we'll probably never know the true extent of what really happened there. Now, again, I want to emphasize, I'm not saying that shutting down the entire society and collapsing the economy, putting everybody out of work was the best idea. Obviously, it was not. It was a knee jerk overreaction, which will likely in the long run, give us as much problem as the virus is going to continue to give us. So going back to the theory that I'm channeling through my tinfoil hat, if I was to guess, I would say that the people who are protesting right now will be the ones who are scapegoated for when this all goes bad, either throughout summer or in fall, because this is going to continue to spread. I put out a video probably about a month ago talking about a paper which discussed the seasonality of this illness and how it prefers a certain climates, or at least that paper suggested that. Well, it turns out uh, this is spreading in India, it's spreading in Brazil, it's spreading in places that have very warm climates, lots of sunlight, and the consensus seems to be that because this is such a novel virus that nobody has immunity to, that that is going to lessen those effects which typically make uh, things like influenza seasonal like ultraviolet light the higher temperature and people being more outdoors so it can't be incubating inside places so i think that is the narrative that is shaping up right now because if a million people in the united states die because of this virus you can bet your bottom dollar it is going to be politicized to death no pun intended and i'm seriously not trying to make light of this issue because I think it's very serious what's happening right now. I'm going to post an article in the description that checkmates the notion that the flu is worse than this. I can totally sympathize with a person's desire to protest the draconian laws. I'm really getting tired of saying the word draconian. Uh, what are some other ones? Unprecedented. I'm getting tired of saying these words, but it's the best word to describe it. I understand people's frustration with that 100%. I'm right there with you. I've made videos about it, but you can't go to the other extreme and say that it's not a problem and minimize the problem to the peril of yourself or your family members. So I'm making this video as a warning to my subscribers. We have seen almost the 60,000 deaths that uh, Fauci had predicted almost already. And the end tally is going to far exceed, if not dwarf that number. 
and the slowdown, whether it's due to the lockdowns or the seasonality, is much slower than they're saying when you actually look at the numbers, because every day between two to 3,000 people are dying of this disease in the United States. Not of the disease, of course, there is the comorbidity factor. And again, I'm willing to concede and play the devil's advocate and say that we are certainly more sensitive to the detection and attribution of deaths related to this. But flu deaths are attributed in the same way. That's why there's a range between 250,000 and 500,000. Now, we need to be aware of the fact that the market is so easily swayed by what is going on with this right now that any little news article that talks about some development in some area that might either help or hinder uh, the progress of, of rectifying this problem has a very disproportional effect on this volatile market right now so there are people with vested interests in moving the needle left or right bearish or bullish when they want to buy or sell all it takes is one study to come out and have the findings falsely extrapolated to the United States population as a whole and say that, oh yeah, 5% of people are infected to give the market another superficial propping when the statistical projections of that are not scientifically sound at all. And in this article I post in the description, it will explain that much better than I can. So no, this is not the apocalypse. Life will eventually go back to normal or the new normal that is. This is certainly nothing to be toyed with because again, we don't know everything about the virus. There could potentially be long lasting effects of this that we don't even realize right now. There isn't enough definitive science about how this thing affects our immune systems about how long we're immune to it, about how many people have been exposed to it, about how deadly it is, why it's deadly in certain populations, how it's gonna mutate in the future, we really don't know yet. So I, for one, fully support being socially responsible in your return to your livelihoods. That means going above and beyond what's expected with conventional social distancing bylaws or laws or whatever you want to call them i support that 100 percent. but what i also know is that people are people and there are very few people out there even during the lockdown there's a lot of irresponsible people when it comes to social distancing when people hear that we are in phase one of the reopening i genuinely worry that this thing is going to flare up again in many places and come fall and winter if everyone is hypothetically then in phase three, when we're gonna get hit with the flu and this virus at the same time, it will truly test the limits of our healthcare system. And that I believe is why they're still building these ventilators. Why is it that they're saying that this is all gonna be all right in a few weeks, yet they're building ventilators like crazy. They're manufacturing personal protective equipment in the tens of millions why would they be doing that if they thought it was just going to go away like they say it is and remember that very little of what they have said and i'm talking about the governments of the world has been accurate up until this point and i don't think it's because they're nefarious or sinister or necessarily have an agenda obviously no one is letting a good crisis go to waste and maybe they're just overreacting and over preparing now to try to make up for the fact that they were so under prepared before but I think those preparations are foreshadowing the future, that this indeed is going to get worse. And wouldn't it be ironic and tragic if the people who were actively out there protesting this became stricken with this virus down the road? It is going to take root in the Southern Hemisphere where testing is wholly inadequate and we will never truly know the extent of how much it's spreading down there and what it's doing and the virus will mutate with the seasons now whether it mutates to become more lethal or less lethal is unknown there's just as good of a chance that it will mutate to be less lethal as it does more lethal but i don't profess to know everything there is to know about that as i've always said on this channel go and do your own research i'm just here to try to act as a gateway for the most up-to-date and rational perspectives on the issue that you can go through and research for yourself and come to your own conclusions. So my subsequent videos are likely going to be talking about how we're going to deal with a potential resurgence 
and approaches that I plan on taking to safeguard myself from the future, not only from the virus itself, even though I'm not too overly concerned about the virus, simply because I'm a relatively physically fit 39-year-old person with no underlying health conditions, but I'm certainly concerned about the societal breakdown component of this, the austerity component, the economic collapse component. So that's what we're going to talk about in the future, guys. Thanks for watching. Don't forget, if you enjoy this channel, please give the video a thumbs up. I'm going to post the link in the description where you can get preparedness gear if you need it. But first and foremost, shop locally. Support your local businesses. Thanks for watching, guys. Canadian Prepper out.